Welcome back to the Pancho Crystal Skull Hour. And I just want to mention also uh, how much I appreciate everybody who's been uh, calling me before uh, uh, today, yesterday, the day before yesterday, that they were very interested and they were going to be joining us. Uh, I have some people that have called me all the way from Argentina, and there's people from Mexico, and they were asking, well, is the show going to be in Spanish? And unfortunately, we're going <laughs> to, it's got to be in English this time. But I just want to say saludos a todos mis amigos in Argentina, in Mexico, y bienvenidos a. Uh, as the show. Uh, I also want to, and here we are with uh, Kendall Ray Morgan, and we're discussing Crystal Skulls uh, and his research and his work. We're also discussing uh, an event that's coming up in New York City on 10 10 10. Uh, but before we go into that, Kendall, I kind of like, uh, this is our first show, and, uh, and, I, and I'm learning a little bit myself, and I forgot really to introduce probably the most important guy in the room, which is Pancho. <laughs> and Pancho's sitting here right with us, and uh, he's, I, this is the first time, actually, that he's uh, been uh, on camera like this, and uh, we're very happy to have him. Uh, it, uh, as you heard in the intro, I've, I've, I've had Pancho uh, since uh, my grandmother passed away in 2009, and he came to me, and, and I'm very blessed, and I'm very happy to have him with me. And I'm actually learning a lot. So that's why I'm really, really grateful that you're here, because uh, 10 months ago, I didn't really know anything about Crystal Skulls. One thing that you uh, said to me when I saw you yesterday was the term pre-Indiana Jones and post-Indiana Jones. And if you could, like, you know, tell me a little bit more about that. <laughs> I thought that was interesting. Well, uh as everybody usually knows by now, that the um, Indiana Jones movie with the Crystal Skulls mm -hmm. really brought out the uh, Crystal Skulls and a lot, uh, the awareness of a lot of the Crystal Skulls. Right. Previous to that, there's there's been some uh, uh, quite a few uh, Crystal Skull events over the last 15, 20 years. Mm -hmm. uh, people like the F.R. Nick Nasarino, considered the pioneer, but uh, a gentleman that deserves a lot of respect for really uh, getting getting a lot of information out was a gentleman by the name of Chet Snow. Mm -hmm. out of Sedona, very, uh, uh, very interesting man in his own way, uh, has done a lot of work with the Crystal Skulls and the Crystal Skull Guardians and uh, to bring that, that information forward. Then, then the, uh, the movie came out mm -hmm. and uh, everybody kind of had their mindset on what uh, Indiana Jones was doing with the uh, Crystal Skulls. But primarily there hadn't been any events, really Crystal Skull events, uh, for the Crystal Skulls uh, mm -hmm. because the consciousness of the Crystal Skulls had really changed after the movie came out. Mm -hmm. So when we did the 09, 09, 09, uh, the Crystal Skull community uh, really wasn't sure where they were going to fit in, how things were going to flow from, from that point forward after, the, af after, uh, after that movie came right, out. Right. And so uh, a group of people, uh, Crystal Skull uh, owners, guardians, uh, caretakers, and brought their skulls together in Sedona, Arizona, and did a, a very large ceremony, very okay. important ceremony. And from those ceremonies, a year later is when the information started to flow that this, these things needed to take place. Mm -hmm. And uh, a lot of that does tie into the two, 2012 time frame. Right. And, and, it, and it was as a result of that gathering in Sedona uh, in 08, where you actually, even though you weren't present at that gathering, but that's through that you got your calling that it was uh, basically that's when I got the call. Yeah, you got the call. Uh, I was the yeah. one that was out there that got the call, <laughs> and uh, and it wasn't a call on the telephone, but it was. <laughs> no, uh, yeah. you know, it just uh, uh, we didn't we didn't really even know about that till uh, after uh, somewhere after the the event was coming together, mm -hmm. that uh, a gentleman, uh, which was our master of ceremonies in, uh, in the Tempe event, uh, Yap Van Eaton, yeah, uh, mm -hmm. is a PhD biologist and uh, from uh, the Netherlands. And uh, he's the one explained to us, my, my co-partner at that time, that uh, we had, they had actually uh, seeded that information out there to take place. They didn't know who it was going to be that would pick it up, but they knew someone would, and it was us. Oh, good. Right, right, right. I'd like to know a little bit more about, um, you know, we use that term ancient. You know, and, but we know that there's other crystal skulls that aren't ancient. We have some modern crystal skulls and some old crystal skulls. Can you give us a little bit more insight, a little bit more information about what differentiates an ancient crystal skull from other crystal skulls? In the crystal skull community, they have uh, some terminology that they use uh, because of the different crystal skulls that are out there, what are considered new crystal skulls. We have carvers from Brazil, China primarily uh, that are carving 
and, and selling on the market today, these new crystal skulls. Uh, some of the contemporary crystal skulls have been out there maybe, you know, 100 years. Uh, we see some of those show up in different places in Tibet. And, and, and then we have um, what's considered maybe old crystal skulls. It may fall somewhere between 100 to, to maybe 1,000 years old that were used. An old crystal skull or an ancient crystal skull? Well, when Oracle Stone Productions uh, began to put these events together, we primarily working with the field of, uh, of metaphysics mm -hmm. and uh, the paranormal. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of paranormal activity that takes place, as you all know. You yeah. shared some of that with me, <laughs> with Pancho. Yeah. Uh, uh, and so, uh, some of it is just, it's just it's unexplained phenomena. Mm -hmm. In in that field, there are many uh, that we work with that are considered to be ultra sensitive people, sensitives. Right. Right. Um, uh, they work with different modalities, uh, uh, healing. Uh, a lot of times with the crystal skulls, a main theme that seems to run with most of them is, as it is with Pancho, uh, deals with healing, a healing process. Right, exactly. And um, so uh, that's basically... Uh, kind of a formula maybe that uh, determines or really... Do no, basically it's a, a, or a scientific we, formula. We do have a, a, a couple of people, uh, Stephen Mailer, okay. uh, Yap Van Eaton, and they work with they work a lot of with what's uh, uh, Stephen Mailer's more of the scientific oh, okay. Okay. research, and Yap Van Eaton works with subtle energies, yeah. and and they can actually begin to work with the skull to gather information that's stored inside those skulls. Okay. You know, I notice that uh, you're kind of looking at Pancho. It's really kind of difficult not to look at him, and and you know, I'm I'm totally uh, you know fascinated by him, and I've asked myself that question. It's like, how can I know whether Pancho's ancient or not? And go ahead. Well, we've 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 sent a few photos uh -huh. to what we consider we know we consider maybe as experts, but they like to be considered called researchers. Researchers, yeah. Uh, uh, the top <laughs> top people that are considered that in the uh, crystal skull field, and. Uh, we keep getting the same uh, response. Very interesting. Very, very interesting. interesting. Right. Yeah, he is very <laughs> interesting. And you know, and we were discussing this last night. And and I want to, you know, want our, our our listeners and our viewers uh, to uh, maybe get a little bit of what we were talking about uh, about his characteristics. Uh, you know, um, anatomically, he's not human looking. He's not. You know, we look at the number of teeth. We see the shape of his head. Does that give you any indication of anything, or can you determine uh, anything about uh, about him because of the fact that he's not anatomically correct? Well, first of all, you know, there's not a whole lot of people who really have had the opportunity to see uh, and actually meet and work with ancient crystal skulls. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people who are interested in crystal skulls maybe have seen one or two. Uh, Joanne Parks with Max, mm -hmm. uh, she gets around quite a bit. And of course, obviously, the uh, Anna Mitchell Hedges, who had the Mitchell Hedges skull. Mm -hmm. uh, these are two of the probably most well-known crystal skulls to get around. But when you start to assemble uh, some of the ancient crystal skulls, uh, we look for similarities in those and who who were carving them at the, at particular time frames mm -hmm. what what area what area were they found in uh there, there's a lot of research that goes much deeper than most people realize about the ley lines of the earth right 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 and you know so um uh with poncho uh with poncho he's very in the and i use the same term very interesting is because <laughs> uh w working with poncho i believe there's a lot of healing modalities Mm -hmm. That uh, uh, that Pancho gives out, uh, he seems to emit uh, a very positive. Uh, you have mentioned that you know right. energies, but I also believe he has information stored inside of him that uh, will be very very important. There's a lot of lot of information stored inside of Pancho. Uh, you know, yesterday when we were talking, you mentioned something to me that I found interesting about uh, on his like cheekbones. Is that where the information is stored, or I, I, I think you said something about that? Could you go into more detail? A lot of the a lot of the researchers that have researched in fifteen twenty years of the crystal skulls seem to find that in that particular area they find they uh, when they study that with light and mm -hmm. different technologies that they actually began to see uh, uh, pictures forming in that area, mm -hmm. and actually with uh, Pancho, uh, I shared that with you last mm -hmm. night. You know there there is uh, I've seen some I've seen some pictures of some things. Uh, uh, in, oh yeah, that you've seen some pictures inside of those areas in his uh, in, with Poncho in yeah. his face. That's so, so that's where they look for some of that, uh, they look from, for that from what the right, researchers right. have been saying. And, and I want to go a little bit more about the teeth, also, <laughs> if you don't mind. Yeah, we can talk a little bit about the teeth, and I don't want to get into 
that much, uh, you know, because I know it's very deep and everything. Yeah, yeah. But the teeth is something that I've been finding very, very interesting. And I've just been informed that we're going to be going into a little bit of a commercial break. And that's good because, uh, you know, we're, uh, I want to go into the teeth and what you think about the teeth. And it, it's going to be a little bit profound. So I want my, my listeners to get the full thing after commercial. Okay, very good. Does that sound good to you? That sounds right. good to me. All right. <laughs> well, again, everybody, uh, uh, we're listening uh, to the Pancho Crystal Skull Hour, and we're here with Kendall Ray Morgan. Uh, Kendall came from Tucson, Arizona, uh, where he lives, just to be with us and to share his knowledge and information about the Crystal Skulls. And uh, I'm finding it very, very, very interesting. And welcome back to Pancho Crystal Skull Hour. Thanking again our guest here, Kendall Ray Morgan. Uh, before we continue with the interview, I just want to let everybody know that if they want to uh, give us a call, uh, they can give us a call at 702-408-0897. Again, the phone number is 702-408-0897. And if you'd like to ask a question or if you want to send us an email, you can also email us at poncho, that's P-A-N-C-H-O, at jjlnradio.info. We'd love to receive your calls and your emails. If you have a question for me, if you have a question for Kendall, or if you have a question for Poncho. <laughs> Poncho's really good about answering, uh, he's, he's, he's been really good about answering questions for people. Uh, so let's go back about and, and discuss about uh, about the teeth, about uh, if they have any particular significance. Um, I know yesterday you did mention some very interesting, very interesting things about that. Well, in some of the ancient crystal skulls, uh, the research has uh, showed uh, the data on some of these skulls uh, in, uh, uh, collecting information on them and the uh, symmetry and the weight and uh, the, uh, the descriptiveness of some of the skulls. Uh, there are two, two or three particular skulls uh, that have uh, two, and they have, actually have two sets of teeth. Right. And so it's believed that maybe the same carver had carved those ancient crystal skulls at whatever given time mm -hmm. and that that took place. Um, uh, uh, I showed you a picture of Max. Max, right. ha you know, we have uh, we have 32 teeth. Right. Max has 32 teeth. Right. Um, so he's more humanly or human-like as a as a skull. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So uh, you know, we we look at those kind of things. Right, um, right. One of the things that that, 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 that seems to be uh, I information that seems to be coming from Pancho is uh, obviously is the time frame mm -hmm. that Pancho's saying I, I want to get out there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and and and, I, and I'd like to let the viewers know that uh, how many teeth Pancho has. Pancho has two rows, and it's uh, nine. Uh, excuse, yeah, nine on each row. It's a total of eighteen teeth, and we know that. That's not human. Uh, you, you know, humans don't have that number of teeth. Right. So, is there any significance uh, about the nine or the uh, eighteen? There's, there seems to be a lot of significance to that. Uh, first of all, teeth. You know, they represent our mouth, and we communicate through that mouth. Right. And, and so, uh, there seems to be uh, a form of communication that takes place. Now, the interesting thing about the nine with Pancho is, yeah, like you said, you have nine and mm -hmm. nine, which is eighteen, which is nine. Um, so what seems to be interesting about that right now, there's a professor out of uh, uh, Europe. His name is Dr. Carl Kahneman. And Dr. Carl Kahneman and uh, uh, some people with uh, common passion, uh, Joseph Giovi, who actually is the U.S. representative for Don Alejandro, okay. the, the grand elder of the living Maya people, mm -hmm. which will be in New York City with okay. us, okay. is that they, uh, they believe that the Mayan calendar is tied to what's called the conscience convergence. The conscience convergence. Yeah, I've heard of that. Okay, and that took place, just took place on July 17th and 18th. Okay. And they feel it's a very significant uh, marker in the time frame of the Mayan calendar. Okay. And what, what's interesting about that is, though, their work ties into what's called the ninth wave of consciousness the that's hitting wave. the planet right Correct. now. Right. And